In this lesson, we're going to look at the Italian invasion of Abyssinia in 1935 to 1936 and see to what extent how the League handled this, damaged the reputation of the League of Nations, and how the Italian invasion also benefited Adolf Hitler. So, back at the end of the 19th century, Italy had previously tried to invade Abyssinia back in 1896. The Italian forces were defeated at the Battle of Adowa, and there was a humiliating retreat from Abyssinia by Italy. So it completely failed to invade Abyssinia back at the end of the 19th century. Now, Mussolini, if you remember, he took power in the March on Rome in 1922. In the early to mid-1930s, Mussolini's got a number of concerns. One is the, is the Depression. Perhaps if he can mount a spectacularly successful foreign war, it will distract his people from the problems at home. The other one is Mussolini is concerned about the rise of Hitler in Germany. He's concerned about German rearmament and a possible unification of Austria and Germany. So at this stage, Mussolini doesn't like Hitler. He's planning this, however, he's planning this invasion of Abyssinia to get revenge and perhaps distract his people from problems at home. Shortly after this, the Streza Front was formed in April of 1935. This was between France, Britain and Italy. All three of these powers were worried by Hitler and they were worried by German rearmament. They wanted to make sure that Hitler stuck to the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, that he did not, for example, unify with Austria, which was something that worried Mussolini especially. So this is an anti-German grouping of Britain, France and Italy. Mussolini leaves the Streza Conference, though, with the impression, the idea that Britain and France are essentially saying it's okay for him to invade Abyssinia. They would allow him to do that. They wouldn't object to Italy invading Abyssinia. So he takes that away from the Streza Conference. What Britain does next here, it's hard to find anything positive to say about this. This is the Anglo-German Naval Agreement in June of 1935. In this agreement between Nazi Germany and Great Britain, Britain allows the German Navy to build up to 35% of the size of the British Navy and allows Germany to construct submarines. Both of these things are strictly and very clearly forbidden by the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Germany is not allowed to have any submarines, and yet in this agreement, Britain is essentially allowing Germany to break the terms of the treaty with the agreement of Britain. This is something that is really received very, very badly by, by Britain and Italy. They were not consulted by Britain's actions here. And of course, as we say, it damaged the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. So this damages the Streza front somewhat. Next, the Italian invasion of Abyssinia. The gentleman you can see on the cover of this Time magazine is uh, Emperor Haile Selassie, who was Emperor of Ethiopia, one of the last independent countries in Africa at that time. So in October of 1935, the Italians commenced their invasion by bombing Adowa, the scene of their earlier humiliating defeat. What will the League do about this? Both Abyssinia and Italy are members of the League, but clearly Italy is acting in a highly aggressive way, in a way which the League is supposed to stop. It's invading another sovereign country in the League of Nations. What will the League do? Will collective security work? Well, what the League does initially, what the League does at first, is there is a trade ban which doesn't include oil. If Mussolini and the Italian forces had not received any oil, if they were unable to get oil, that, the, that would have caused the invasion to grind to a halt. You, you need oil to, to keep a modern army going with its tanks and planes and ships and so on. So they didn't ban oil, although you can also make the point that even if they had banned oil, the Americans could have simply plugged the trade gap with Abyssinia. So 
I do like this particular cartoon. This cartoon is satirizing, it's making fun of the idea of the imperial mission, the idea of this western power coming in and bringing civilization, bringing law and order and education and better infrastructure and so on. Well, you can see here, the so-called barbarism is this peaceful village where everything's fine and the people are happy, whereas the so-called civilization the Italians are, have brought with their army involves death, destruction, bombing and so on. In fact, the, the Italians used poison gas on uh, Ethiopian forces during the Abyssinian conflict. Next, Britain and France do something which severely undermines the authority of the League of Nations. This is the Hoa Laval Pact. Hoa was a British politician and Laval was a French politician. And what they do is they attempt to make a secret deal outside the League of Nations with Mussolini. In this secret deal, Mussolini would stop fighting, but he would receive the best parts of Abyssinia, and some parts of Abyssinia, the poorer parts, would be left independent. This, however, was leaked to the press. The public around the world found out about it, and the public in Britain, France, and elsewhere, they were outraged by this, out outraged by the fact that their government was considering handing over a sovereign country to the aggressive force of Italy. Okay, so, so the, the the Juan Laval Pact failed in a number of ways. The pact itself failed when the public found out about it and they wouldn't accept it. Hua had to resign and the fact that Britain and France had gone outside the League of Nations, that the two most powerful members of the League of Nations had tried to do a deal outside the League of Nations, it really was a death blow to the reputation and the standing of the League of Nations, which finally did ban oil, but by that stage the invasion was largely complete anyway. After the invasion of his country, the emperor, the former emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, made a very stirring and emotional speech to the League of Nations. I was defending the cause of all small peoples who are threatened with aggression. The problem is a much wider one than that of Italy's aggression. It's the very existence of the League of Nations. God and history will remember your judgment our state's going to set a terrible precedent of bowing before force. Well, clearly they had. Um, the League of Nations had essentially allowed a, a more powerful country to take over a weaker country. Um, Haile Selassie ends his speech with these stirring and prophetic words. It is us today, it will be you tomorrow. So the Abyssinian crisis utterly discredited the League. Nobody respects the League as... as as a negotiating power or a force at all after Abyssinia. This is really brought out in the open in the Spanish Civil War of 1936. A left-wing government is democratically elected in Spain, but right-wing elements in Spain can't accept this. There's a civil war of right-wing against the elected left-wing government. Well, Germany and Italy help the right-wing rebels. Germany sends planes and troops and so on, as does Italy. They help the right-wing rebels to defeat the, the, the government. Even though the, the left-wing nationalist government did ask the League for help, the League did nothing at this stage. And of course, in September of 1939, when World War II breaks out, the League is a forgotten power. Nobody even bothers to inform the League that, the, that, that war has broken out. The Abyssinian crisis also had an effect in terms of Hitler looking at the response of the Western democracies, seeing how weak it was, seeing how they were not prepared to use force, and Hitler made a note of this. He, this is a quote from Hitler at the time. The modern British Empire shows all the signs of decay and unstoppable breakdown. Britain will regret her softness. It will cost her the empire. So Britain sees, sorry, uh, Hitler sees Britain as being soft as being unwilling to use force. It meant the end of the Streza front. Mussolini, in his view, the British and French had done double dealing. He felt they'd essentially said to him it was okay if he invaded Abyssinia, but then they condemned it and they did sanctions against Italy. So he thought that Britain and France were double dealing. 
Hitler, meanwhile, ha hadn't opposed the invasion of Abyssinia. So although Mussolini didn't really like Hitler that much, at least Hitler hadn't opposed the invasion of Abyssinia. So in 1936, he thanked Hitler. This relationship developed from there. In 1936, Mussolini was talking about a Rome-Berlin axis. So there's an alliance of sorts between Rome and Berlin. This obviously strengthens and helps the position of Hitler. Next, the Anti-Comintern Pact was signed. If you remember, the Comintern was set up after World War I in Soviet Russia. And the aim of the Comintern was to spread communism around the world. Well, Germany, Italy and Japan signed the Anti-Comintern Pact, hoping to stop the spread of communism and promising to help each other if any of them is threatened by a communist power. So they're going to work together against communism. It's not a formal military alliance yet, but it definitely strengthens the position of Hitler. So let's have a look again at some benefits for Hitler of the Abyssinian crisis. It was apparent that the League was unlikely to stop German aggression. It hadn't acted against Italy. Why should it act against Germany? So it made him more confident to use armed force. The anti-German grouping of Britain, France and Italy in the Stresor Front, that collapsed as a result of the Abyssinian crisis, which is a, a bonus for Hitler. And not only that, one anti-German alliance collapsed and another one was born, the Rome-Berlin Axis and the Anti-Comintern Pact. Both strengthened Hitler's position. It also gave Hitler an opportunity. Uh, Germany, excuse me, sorry, Britain and France were, were focused on the whole Abyssinian crisis and Hitler used that focus of attention as a distraction to send troops into the Rhineland. If you remember, the Rhineland was supposed to be a demilitarized zone, but Hitler sends his armed forces into, it's part of Germany, but it's supposed to remain demilitarized, he sends his troops into the Rhineland. So in summary, the Abyssinian crisis utterly destroys the reputation of the League of Nations. The fact that it doesn't really use any armed force to stop Mussolini's invasion. The fact that Britain and France attempt to do a secret deal outside of the League of Nations. The reputation of the League of Nations is, is dealt a death blow by the Abyssinian crisis. There were also benefits for Hitler. He saw how weak the Western democracies had been in response to the aggression of Italy. The anti-German grouping of the Streza Front collapsed and was replaced by the Rome-Berlin Axis and the anti-Comintern Pact. So a very significant event leading towards World War II, the invasion of Abyssinia.